Was this man a traitor? The answer is logically yes. But how profound do we call a person a traitor? Does this man who led to the death of one of the greatest generals in the Philippines really deserved it? Before we wind up and put this into our personal textbooks, why don't we go back and look at the beginnings, the beginnings where it started. The Genesis. Januario Galot is the name the man known as many as the one who supposedly betrayed Gregorio del Pilar at the Battle of Tirad Pass in Ilocos Sur that led to the general's death at the hands of the Americans. Januario Galot belonged to the Itneg or Tingian tribe as the Spanish called them who hailed from the region of the Cordillera in Abra province. After the Filipino-American war broke out, they were forcibly recruited by the Filipino revolutionaries to fight the Americans in the Battle of Caloocan. And as a result, Galot and 200 Igorot warriors journeyed from the Cordillera to Manila. And along the way, many unacceptable and disgraceful acts by the other Filipinos were suffered by the Igorots. They were discriminated by the residents. They were deprived with proper food as their rations were little to bad. They were threatened to be killed or executed when they try to leave the coast. And when they reached the battleground, armed only with spears and axes and shields, They were easily put to surrender by the Americans who were equipped with modern rifles and artillery. The Igorots then fell out from the Philippine army and the Americans made them as allies and soon they became as guides to the Americans as they were trying to infiltrate the mountainous Cordillera, the only area that the Philippine Revolutionary Army could go safely to retreat at and take refuge at. So in history, on the 2nd of December 1899, the 300 American troopers were able to defeat Gregorio del Pilar and his 60 men through the way that Galut revealed to them. And because of that, many have concluded that the 200 Igorot warriors may have been compelled to switch sides at the war after the thorough discrimination they suffered at the hands of the Filipino revolutionaries. Many also interpreted Galot's act as a payback for the ill treatment that they received from their fellow Filipinos. But 
As for Januario Gallo, he did not even know that there was another war after their defeat in Caloocan. He was simply there helping the foreigners to navigate the mountains. Besides, nobody would ever know how the Americans had been predisposing the Igorots. And now, after hearing this unwritten and unheard things about Januario Gallo, do you still consider him as a low-life traitor as history made him out to be? All right, let us know through the comments down below. Comment your comments in the comment section. And one more thing, do you ever think about as to why the Filipinos, the other Filipinos, look down on the Igorots? Why? What made that nasty attitude by lowland Filipinos against us, the Igorots? What was the start of Igorot discrimination? And believe it or not, until this very day at the year of 2021, a lot of people other Filipinos still get the nasty attitude to discriminate and think something else about the Igorots, which is just nasty. And do you want to know why and where it all started? Follow our page and subscribe to our YouTube channel because one of the next videos is entitled What Started the Discrimination Against the Igorots? Let us know that in the next video. Thank you so much, Kakailians, and everybody who is watching. This is your Igorot guy, Freddy. Proud to be Igorot. Matago tago tako in on gabagabay kiton umin. Hagiyo, see you on the next video. Cheers. The Austronesian language did not move by horses or chariots, but by boats and more boats.